After years of using Spotlight Search on Mac, I've finally moved on. It's March 2025, and this Spotlight replacement Raycast is the app of the month. Currently, I am a free user of Raycast. With the Pro subscription, you get things like AI integration and cloud sync of all your settings if you're moving between various computers. I think that could be very helpful. And then it backs up stuff automatically for you in the event that you know something happens to your hard drive or your computer for you to easily restore on a new instance. For me personally, I was never an Alfred user, but I did constantly launch things through Spotlight Search, the default search tool on the Mac. And I kind of got tired of its lack of customization and it's kind of clunky and doesn't really do all that great of a job of searching things. I found myself constantly trying to look for stuff and it just wasn't bringing it up. I had launched various shortcuts through Spotlight Search. I wanted to look for different files through Spotlight Search. And after a while, I just kind of got fed up with how much time I was spending trying to find stuff in Spotlight and then having to go to Finder anyways. So you can think about Raycast initially like a Spotlight search replacement, and that's exactly what I did. I had Raycast installed and I kind of just used it to launch apps from time to time. That's how I started out with Raycast. It has a whole other side of customization and feature sets through various extensions, snippets, applications, and different commands that you can customize within Raycast to make it even more than just a spotlight replacement. One of the things that I use most often is the calculator in Raycast. So I took the calculator off of my dock on the Mac app. And when I need to do some quick calculation or even conversions, it's great at that. I just pull up Raycast and type it in. And then if you hit enter after you're done with your um, equation, it'll copy the answer to the clipboard if you needed that for some reason or to put it into an Excel file. As far as customization goes, this is where Raycast has really saved me a ton of time recently. So let's start with aliases. Now you can put an alias against pretty much anything and when you type in the alias, it will bring up whatever you are looking for. So it's an easier way to call up different applications or extensions or shortcuts or you know really anything that you want. So a few of them that I have is I type in the letter TL and that pulls up the today link. I talked about this in my Forever Notes video. If you haven't seen that one and you're interested in making Apple Notes your full second brain with the Forever Notes system, you can check that out up in the corner. TL for me is the link to the Apple shortcut that pulls up the today note. So that makes linking the journal notes together very easy. Every journal note has its own today link at the top in case you're a few days back or a few days forward. It's an easy way to get back to the today note. Then I put TNW as today note with weather. Oftentimes when I'm journaling, I like to have my location and the weather, and this pulls the time as well. It's kind of a metadata header, if you will. Copies that to the clipboard, then opens the today note. So you can paste all that information and then just start journaling if you need to make a quick entry. Then I put DND for do not disturb. And then I have a button on the Logitech MX Creative Console that actually calls up Raycast, types in DND, and hits enter. And that's how I trigger the do not disturb mode for filming videos. Now you can do this with Apple Shortcuts as well, and you can do it with an automation. So it would go check, you know, is do not disturb on? No, then, you know turn on do not disturb is it on yes then turn it off but you know what this works fine for me for now and i can add those automations in the future if i so choose then lastly something i do pretty often is switch between audio output devices so i have sod for switch output device that lets me change from the mac studio to my headphones if i'm doing something like video editing and makes switching back and forth a lot easier than clicking in through the menu on the Mac and switching it with a few clicks. It's a lot easier to just do that straight inside of Raycast. 
And shortcuts is next. Another way that you can customize and bring things up are various keyboard shortcuts. I am using the relatively new hyper key um, and I have that set to caps lock. So that triggers control option command shift and has that um, tied to the caps lock key. And I use this to switch between applications. So hyper key T goes to typefully. S goes to Safari, N goes to Notes, F goes to Final Cut Pro, C goes to Calendar. So that's how I kind of navigate in between Windows. I don't ever really close things on the Mac, so I often have a bunch of stuff open at the same time. Windows are everywhere. I don't use um, really defined window management stuff other than, you know, Magnet to move things. Um, basically, split screen is as complicated as I get. And using HyperKey frees up the other keyboard shortcuts for various other things inside of Raycast. If you wanted to keep command and option open for other things, that's a great way to do it with the HyperKey. And I've watched pretty much every what's in my Raycast video on the Raycast YouTube channel and come up with a bunch of different extensions. Every time I watch one of those, I find something that I need to go install. So we'll start with year in progress. I saw this inside of uh, Thomas, the CEO of Raycast, and I've pinned that to my favorites. It shows you basically how far along you are in the year right now as of recording this video, we're 10% in. And then, like I said, I put a uh, set output device in my favorites as well. That's not an extension, so we will move on to Typefully. I started using Typefully recently to manage social media posts. As I created you know, a podcast and a newsletter and another YouTube channel, keeping up with posting what I am making um, began to be a little bit of a drain. So this lets me do it as I'm thinking about it. If I have a video scheduled to post on YouTube, I can create you know, a Twitter style thread or a single Twitter post and link the video to come out at the same time that the video comes out. So that's nice. But then just in general, if I'm sitting on the Mac and I want to make a post on either Twitter or threads, or I do use kind of blue sky a little bit. Um, I don't really scroll through it, but I'm posting to it now. Typefully lets you do that with ease. So it's an easy way inside the Raycast extension to get a um, post out there into the world quickly. Then, like I said, I am a big Apple Notes user, so I have the Apple Notes extension. I don't use this all that often because I have Quick Note down as a hot corner in the bottom right of the screen, and generally I always have Apple Notes open. Uh, I'm not usually browsing the Mac and putting a bunch of new notes in unless I'm already inside of a folder working on a YouTube video or something like that. So there's some helpful features. Um, easy ways to add things to notes from Raycast. I wouldn't say this is something I use all the time. Same with Fantastical. I've made plenty of videos now about Fantastical. I'm a big Fantastical user. Um, the interface into Raycast is great. There's an extension for it to get, you know, pull up your calendar um, events and add new events and things like that. You can quick add events or set reminders directly from the Raycast window. Color Picker was another handy one that I found recently. Sometimes I'm inside of like Pixelmator Pro or Photoshop and I have an image elsewhere that I want to um, pull the color from on my screen. So going into Raycast and doing Color Picker lets you pick the color from anywhere on the screen and copy the hex value to the keyboard. That way you can paste it into whatever program you're using. For me, Pixelmator Pro or Photoshop. And just a fun, easy way to pull colors and get work done just a little bit faster. Clean Keyboard is a great one as well. I do use a wireless keyboard, so I can just switch it off when I need to clean it. But if you have a laptop, uh, this clean keyboard extension locks your keyboard so you can clean it. Pretty straightforward, but you know, otherwise uh, kind of an annoying task that you would have to shut the computer down to do unless you had another extension elsewhere outside of Raycast that does the same thing. And the last three are kind of more utilities than anything, but I, I have the change case extension that lets you 
select a passage of text or enter a passage of text and change the case if you want it to be all uppercase or proper case or you know so on and so forth. An easy way to do that. Along the same lines is word count. Now, I don't do this all that often, but I do like to try to keep my YouTube titles to a certain length so that they're not getting cut off on mobile and various platforms that have a 55 character limit is effectively where the title will be visible no matter what the device the person is using. So inside of Apple Notes, it's hard to do that. Uh, Obsidian you can, and in drafts you can see character counts pretty easily. Kind of stopped using those two tools and I'm all in on Apple Notes. So um, word count inside of Raycast is an easy way to do that for me. And then lastly was one I saw on Theo's video is uh, toggling the menu bar. And I don't do a lot of screen recordings, but I do do some. Uh, I don't typically worry about how cluttered it looks with the menu bar or like even inside of the browser. Oftentimes I'm recording all my favorites, you know, whatever. But uh, it definitely looks cleaner when you're doing screen recordings if you take the menu bar off and you're just recording the application that you need to share. And then you can toggle it back on easily inside of Raycast as well. I have an affiliate link in the description down below. If you want to try Raycast for free, you're more than welcome to do that. But you can also try out the pro features 14 days for free before you'll pay. And I think Raycast is a no brainer for anybody that has a Mac. Like I said, you can start slow, you can use it as a spotlight replacement, and then add these extensions and actions and aliases and shortcuts as you learn more about the program. I highly recommend checking out the Raycast YouTube channel. Pedro does a great job there with all of the videos and all of the what's in my Raycast videos. Those are most helpful to me to see how everybody else is using Raycast and give me some ideas on how I could best streamline my process. Let me know in the comments down below, are you using Raycast or are you still stuck on Alfred or Spotlight Search for some reason? Thanks for watching this month's App of the Month. We'll see you next time. Later. <laughs>